G'day Australia, my name is Mark Bat. I'm just a white fellow with a camera. Average working class. So thank you for watching the long version. This is the fully informed version. This is the way you can get the facts to help others make a good decision. In this video, you will not see sports stars. You will not see rock and roll musicians. You will not see the political elite telling you what to think. I had this crazy idea when addressing the idea of this Indigenous voice to Parliament and I thought I'd better go and talk to the Indigenous. As a result, the Wagamay people were kind enough to invite me on country for a three-day camp where I got to speak to great many different people. Not everyone wanted to share their voice on camera, but here are the voices of the brave few who did and this is what they had to say. Well, no, because we're not about dividing everyone. You need to work together. I wouldn't even imagine what the voice is, but I know what constitutional recognition is. Because we don't believe that the voice will be a voice for Parliament. We just think it'll be the um, government more reasons to govern things that they couldn't before. If they get this voice, they will still do the same thing what they're doing all the time. This does not help anybody. What it is causing, it's causing division amongst race. Queen Victoria said in the Pacific Island Protection Act and the Pacific Order we're another state. Virtually, you can't make laws for these people. So how is it they can try and drag us into their referendum? No matter uh, where you're from or what nationality is about sort of achieving justice for all of us really, mm. for humanity, you know. They haven't been down to talk to any tribes from the grassroots. This is where they've got to get it from. The voice is about entrapment. In this next section, we focus in on what the Indigenous people think the government might be up to, because in typical Labor style, they're not telling us. We don't want not, none of the government's, uh, well, lies, you know, because, you know, they, they say we, they're going to help you know, Indigenous peoples in this country. But the help is like a, to me, it's a blinder. It's like, because they've got bigger ideas, what they're going to do with themselves. First Nations people this year, through the Albanese government, were uh, promised a constitutional amendment, which was designed to look at um, First Nations people's rights within that um, constitution. And what we en ended up was from Linda Burney is a, a mob of proposals to uh, address welfare reform, housing, health, and these are things that you don't need to change the constitution for, but these are also things that the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs was given the right to do back in 1967 referendum. Do you suspect there's some nefarious intentions and I guess what, what motivates you to think that? With any system of law, whatever the, the, the the basic outlook is we've got to look at um, intent. If they are nefarious, it's always held within their intentions. Are their intentions good? They've, they've lied on countless times before with their intentions. They're, 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 they're never clear and specific about what exactly it is they're going to do. But for some reason, they need that consent to, to uh, do it. And we, we just don't have confidence in the government that we have. And we think that Aboriginal people as well as people in Australia, they should have a, a good law, a governing law, which they haven't got now, you know, and it's not working for anyone. It is their intention. They are nefarious in their actions, in my humble opinion. It's just like a leopard. He can't change his spots. Them follow the same. Why do they want this voice for when they don't even want to acknowledge us? It's being unfair to all the tribes. They know what they're doing. They just want to continue what they're doing. They don't want to listen to us. So that voice is all lies. Queen Victoria also wrote the Pacific Order. You know, the Pacific Order states that in Section 7, saving the rights of the tribes, it says she has no sovereignty or dominion over the land and neither will her heirs or successors. So what authority do they have on our land? They don't have anything. We just keep saying, follow your laws. These are your laws. We, you need to follow them. And then you go on to the Pacific Order, which I had a, a map you saw there. Mm. And the Pacific Order says exactly the same thing as the Pacific Island Protection Act. 
She has no sovereignty or dominion over the land and neither will her heirs or successors. So how'd they claim all this land? They've just ignored it. That's why we're not in the constitution. That's why they're trying to recognize us. Now it's the voice. Yeah. Because we're not in the constitution. They can't make laws for us. And if to make it fair, if they wanted to do it right, they should have come to all the First Nation people. They should have had a referendum themselves to see if we wanted the voice. They haven't been down to talk to any tribes from the grassroots. This is where they've got to get it from. You can't talk, I can't talk for no other tribe on this land because that is treason. It's the same thing with all these countries that are coming here doing what they're doing. They think they can buy. They can't buy no, this country not for sale. Nothing for sale here. But all they've done is pick these 13, 14, 15 monkeys that work for the government and said, yes, these people want a voice. Well, it's unlawful. So would you say the proponents of the voice at the moment are handpicked by government and perhaps on the payroll or a combination? Well, well, they are. They work in that corporate world, that, that system. So, and they've been told what to do because you can clearly see it. Most people don't want the voice. Yeah. Do you think some of those people who are pushing it adamantly believe that they're doing the right thing? Because they've been fooled yeah. and they don't understand it but some people are greedy. If they get this voice, they will still do the same thing what they're doing all the time. This does not help anybody. What it is causing, it's causing division amongst race. Now Albanese turned around and says they want this voice. Then he goes over to NATO. They got interests. He said, we've got to look after our resources. We've got to look after, the people wants to look after their resources. Whose resources are they, do they really belong to? Is this why they want this voice? So that they can help themselves to the resources and continue doing what they're doing, stealing of the tribal people of the land. We find through a lot of the evidence and now it's common knowledge around Australia where our government is, you know, unlawful entities, you know, mm. and that, and, um, and we can see now that there's, uh, with all the lies and everything like that, things are starting to crumble. There's always those double standards there, you know. They change their laws every time they change their pants, you know, or something, yeah. you know, just to suit, their, suit themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, we, we don't need a, a voice. The, the, the people here, the 1918, well, the 1992, decision by the Australian Federal Court to recognise um, traditional law in the Federal Court, in the High Court of the country, guarantees us a voice, guarantees each traditional owner group of, of the right to negotiate at local government, state government and Commonwealth and international and also in the commercial field. So the voice is already there. Why did they want a voice all of a sudden? Because something's going on. Why all these foreign armies over here doing training? Are they going to help to steal the country now? Is that what they're here for? Townsville is set to become Australia's army capital with hundreds of Defence Force personnel moving to North Queensland as part of a major restructure. Oh, we've seen them in the supermarket in Ingham just yesterday walking through full battle gear, armed to the teeth. It was quite There's no reason for this because... We are peaceful people on this land. They're the ones with the attitude, not us. So, if it's not an Indigenous voice to Parliament that the Indigenous people want, what is it that they want? Now, if you have a look at the question that, that's been put out there for the Australian public to vote on, there's nothing to do with um, treaties, there's nothing to do with, um, I guess, um, rights, there's nothing to do with... Um, Sovereignty, there's nothing to do with um, truth-telling. All these things that were negotiated and supposed to be there were, have been amended and exempt from the, the, the constitutional question. Simple, clean food, clean water. That's it. That's in anything to do with anybody, primarily it's your health. We think of you healthy often, we want to see you healthy, we want us to be healthy, we want everyone to be healthy. 
because healthy minds bring forth healthy societies. Is that going back to law, because our law is, comes from a divine source and that, you know, from our creator. So we want to, we want to be, be uh, we want to walk as God's creation under his laws, you know, not under, not un, under a fictitious law and, and walk as a fictitious, per, you know, person, yeah. but as walking under as, as God's creation, as a, as a living being, you know. Just let us be. Yeah. Um, it, it's not complicated. Us as a Wagame people feel stronger that we've got the support of others you know, striving to make you know, do good things for this country. We're not, you know, we're not about greed or dividing people. You know, we want everyone to be, you know, family too. You know, work as a family because that's very important. Without family, you're without family and support for those that you can call family. You're not as strong. And you know, when you all come together, and when there's one or two. It's only one or two, but when you've got four or five when you join together, it makes it stronger. Another number of measures should have been implemented to address those wrongs that were done under the guise of terra nullius. And um, what one in particular is ending the war and the recognition of sovereignty within our communities and the restoration of those societies, whether it be um, through the form of economic independence and, and, and I guess the, the, the commitment towards self-determination. The politicians don't listen. That's the trouble. So as because I'm another state and my people are another state, they shouldn't be voting because once you start voting, that means you're consenting to their system. So you need to stay out. And then when it comes down further down the line, well, there has to be not recognition, but there has to be a thing where they're all held accountable for what they've done. The criminals, the crimes, the genocide and everything else to our people. Because this is all we're doing. We're just building evidence to bring against them in the future. And we're, when you say them, we're referring to government bodies. That's right. Not the not general the, populace. Not the population, just the, the politicians, the people in control, not just the politicians. There's other arms that they work for, yep. you know, elite corporations and everything. Everyone got to wake up here because we're the only ones who can look after this place. Not them corporations because they got no interest in us. Even with the white fellas too. They, they don't want to look after them. So what they're doing with this voice is separating everybody and telling lies. You can call this civilised, but I think society's hit a brick wall here. Does a civilization let itself run and populate and to hit a brick wall? Well, that means there's no social cohesion. There's no real grounding for people to think for themselves when everything's already there for them. So we've got to just stop and rethink about how we do things and how it reflects on the earth that we live on. If we evolve as evolution and science, well, we'll end up being a big eyeball in front of a television screen eating plastic. And we're not, we're not new age. We're not banging in the drama of uh, climate change. We're just looking directly at environmental impact because that's where the water and the food like everything in society, money is always at a part of an issue. So let's have a look at the money, shall we? So far, budget papers reveal that 364.6 million is the cost of delivering the voice so far. As Australians are struggling with the cost of living, I could think of better places I would prefer to see this money going myself. I'd like to thank Peter Credlin for confirming that the fact checkers on the show The Project really do suck at their jobs. They tr attempted to tell Kamal that the government doesn't spend $40 billion every year on various Indigenous programs. Peter Credlin went and did some real fact checking and discovered that they do. I, like Kamal, would like to know where that money is going. Perhaps an audit is what we need, not a voice to Parliament. But enough from me. Let's see what the Indigenous think about the concept of the money. Has anyone from government come to your, your tribes and whatnot and asked we've, them about the voice? We've had a meeting in Townsville and I said to them, we can't treat it with you. 
because they got nothing to treaty with us. They can't treat, we don't want their money and the dollar's worth nothing, so how can you treat it with them? So, and they stand over us, saying we're criminals. How can we be a criminal? We're not the one Stephen, we're here. And the way this government's going, there's not going to be much future generations to happen. White, brindle or black. Mm. And that's the trouble. And we don't want that. And that's why we're standing up mm. to stop that. All the government wants is money, 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 money. We're not interested in money. We are interested in preserving our culture, our lands, for the future generations. They want, at Broadwater, they want to have a, uh, what they call it, rainforest dance, like a party. Yeah, in rave it. sort of thing. Yeah, rave. Yeah. And they wanted to do it at Broadwater. Right. And we said, no, 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 you can't. But council and all these investors and all these people yeah. You know, it's bringing money into the community, but it's not giving any money to the traditional owners. Yeah. We're not getting the red cent. Yeah. But they want to do it, and they want us to come, come and do welcome to country. And I said, oh, I'm, no, that's all. personally, I'm not going to welcome nobody to country yeah. for that reason. Yeah. We don't agree with it. Yeah. And it's going to upset that whole ecological system there. We're about working together. For, for the better of everyone, not just, you know, certain groups or, and it's not about the money with us. It's never been about the money with my family. Um, we've been doing this all along without money from government, without money from funding. It's just all out of goodwill. If, you know, people get attracted to us and they want to join with us. Why we can't expect 22 million people to get on a boat and go home. But what we can expect is some degree of freedom and that's what constitutional change is about ensuring that first nations people have some degree of freedom and that freedom comes in the form of economic independence so that they can govern their own lives administer their own lives and practice self-determination whether people like to know it or not the the government does hold this country in trust for a sovereign people but it's not the australian in general it's the aboriginal yeah. And then what, you go back to the real world tomorrow and your tax bill's waiting for you, your electricity bill's waiting for you, inflation's going through the roof, the, the, the bank's going to bring an electronic currency, you got everything, everything under the sun is, is, is um, happening right now. Yeah, so, um, no to the voice, it, it, it won't do any, anything for anyone except for the political e entity, that's it. Well, the voice, we're underpinning everybody's land in Australia. We are, the sovereign people of Australia are under holding their land titles. This voice goes through, we lose, everyone else loses because they lose their land and it'll be going to the UN. My interview with Whit Booker was amazing. I was blown away by the wealth of knowledge this man has. Uh, this is a small sample of what he shared with us and I believe some of the things he shared here might just shine a light into why the government all of a sudden want this voice to parliament. So in 1722 the anonymous case come about and that was with the Privy Council in England there and they said they could travel but they could only make laws for themselves. So they come out here, they can only make laws for their people, the British subjects, no one else. So we're another state. We're a foreign state to them, so they can't make laws for us. But let us paint in South Australia. That's South Australia, uh, King George wrote that one in uh, 1836. And he also he said that the First Nation people, or the Aboriginal people or the natives, were the possessors of the soil and they weren't to be moved because they were supposed to follow international law and they're supposed to still follow international law. But then you get on to the, the Bunya Proclamation, 1842. So that was 17, 18 years before Queensland become Queensland. So she acknowledged our sovereignty and um, dominion over our land and it says there no one was going north of Brisbane, no one was to 
anyone found there were to be dragged out by the Crown Commissioner or the Colonial Commissioner and no licence to cut trees. As I said before, it's a Crown Act, so they can't repeal it. And if they tried to repeal it, well, it wouldn't work because they had to, well, it was a Crown Act, but under the Act Shortening Acts, 1852 and 1867, it had to be expressly repealed. So they had to put it in the Government Gazette because this was put in the Government Gazette three times in April, the Bunya Proclamation. That's why it became lawful. And to repeal it, well, it had to be expressly repealed, so they put it in three times again. It has never been done. And as I said before, the, any rights in there, rights, they couldn't be squashed. Those rights had to be, if they did repeal it, had to be transferred to the Future Act. If there was going to be another one to replace the Bunya, the Bunya Act proclamation, and if it, the Future Act didn't happen, it all automatically went back to the Bunya proclamation. So, still not sure whether you should vote yes or no? Here's some final words from my Indigenous friends. If you read the actual question that's been published, it just basically says that there will be a voice and that it doesn't make any reference to rights, it doesn't make any reference to powers, it doesn't make any reference to... And if you understand common law and the way that the law and the constitutional proceedings and the processes, it's word for word. If it's not included in the referendum, you can't just surmise or, or take it for granted that this is in there. It's word for word. The lawyers have a field day. When they talk about voice, they've got to get every tribe, an elder of every tribe to talk. That's a voice. But the way they're doing it, Albanese nominated Tom, Thomas Moyer. We didn't nominate him. So what Albanese is doing is illegal. It's treason. And also to pay respects to the elders of the Communist Party, who I think, uh, without a doubt, have played a very important role in our activism. This Thomas May, he can't talk for no other country. He can't talk for no other, they're all bound with you. This place is the same when you've got France, Italy and them. They're all on the one land. Their countries, this place is the same. This is nice, it's, so. So each tribal boundary is considered a country? Yes, we've got boundary marks. They know it. It don't matter what they do, because it's treason. It's got to come from here first, from the tribes. So Thomas Mayer can do what he want to do. That's all right, if they want to go to jail or, because under our law, that is, the death penalty. That's a spear. First in time, best in law. A big fat no. Yeah. I won't be voting because I'm not part of the system. Because so you're not even going to say yes or no, just a no. straight out not getting involved. That's right, because they're trying to drag us into their, as I say, stated here, the, the Constitution. It says that they're not allowed to make laws for us or anything else, and we're another state. Queen Victoria said in the Pacific Island Protection Act and the Pacific Order we're another state. Virtually, you can't make laws for these people. So how is it they can try and drag us into their referendum, their Commonwealth Constitution? They can't. It's illegal. It's unlawful. That's what it is. Under international law, we're another state. The Uluru Statement. There's no full disclosure. These people just signed around an empty box, had nothing in it. So how does that pass? It's all unlawful. I tell people if they're not sure, don't vote no, because the government's not telling you the full story. And if you're not sure, and it's an important thing, a referendum, so vote no. Albanese isn't telling the full story, why vote yes? You should be voting no, because he's supposed to give everybody a full disclosure under corporate law, and they're not. So vote no reasserting our sovereign rights and that, you know, because we haven't been uh, taught that we had them, you know, let alone our human rights don't even, you know, make any dent to giving us any justice, you know. No matter uh, where you're from or what nationality is about sort of achieving justice for all of us, really, mm. for humanity, you know. Uh, with this 
the referendum vote, you know, the yes, yes, not vote. Oh, we don't want it, you know, because we, we see what it's going to do to everyone, you know, not just us, us, but you know, us, the traditional owners of this country or the traditional custodians of this country, Waibalas, you know, all the white people, everyone that lives in this country will be affected by this, divided um, when we are trying to work towards uni uniting, you know, with respect and love and working together. Um, the, the voice vote is going to just blow that out of the water. Everything will just be separated. What we've ended up is with, is with um, a situation where you've got 16 million people thinking that they're going to do the right thing by blackfellas and go to the polls and vote, vote with intentions of trying to close the gap. The gap, the gap in Australian society between blackfellas and, and whitefellas will never be addressed until it's looked at truthfully. You can't get away with stealing a continent. You've got to pay the rent and you've got to pay restitution and you've got to guarantee some sort of coexistence that that is above board and is not designed to enslave or entrap anybody. Why well, do they want everything and fight everyone now? Because they want to continue with what they're doing, but the truth is exposed and they're trying to hide it and shut it. So you think there's, this voice is more about pre preserving themselves as opposed to That's you know, right. the Indigenous culture? Yes. That's why you've got Pauline Hanson. She says this about, oh, they got their paintings, they got, you know, their dancing. She's, what she's saying is, it's not right. It's belittling us. That's all they do all the time. They belittle us all the time. We had enough. It's time for them to stop. We don't need them no more. It's same like Albanese. He can't, he never got permission from the tribal elders here. That's what it's all about. Well, no, no to the voice, because it's, with every policy, it's never specific, it's never laid out in black and white, and everything comes through as a draft. But that draft is then taken back and amended, so it, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's more, I think, about the, politi the political entity uh, keeping its survival, more than anything else. I don't think uh, people will have a voice if the voice is given through all what I understand to this point because you can only ever understand what to this point but it's been unspecific all the way and if I could say there was one bit of legislation I could take from it to say oh this will work I can't because it's unspecific all the way. Well, thank you all very much for watching this. I'd also very much like to extend my thanks to all the tribes who spoke with us on camera and all those who spoke to me off camera. Hopefully next time we might get some more voices for you. Uh, we do have a lot more to share regarding what I learned in my three-day adventure with the Wagamay people, who I thank dearly for inviting me along onto this little adventure. Stay tuned. We'll have more to share as we delve deeply into the 10 hours worth of footage I gathered. Please like and share this video as much as you can. We don't need to change the constitution to listen to the voice of the indigenous people. I would highly recommend that you just go out and speak to them. That's all you need to do. If you're concerned about the indigenous not having a voice, then perhaps it's because you've never taken the time to listen. Thank you all very much for watching. Share the voice of the indigenous people around by sharing this video. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's a wrap. Sure. Yeah. That's a wrap then. <laughs>